there is nothing replaceable to the feeling of one's own home. And once you watch this video of homeowners who refuse to sell their houses, regardless of price and pressure, you will realize that people will go to crazy lengths to save what is theirs. Let's start the video with a folk hero that inspired a movie called Up. Edith Macefield turned down a million dollar offer for her little Seattle farmhouse. The builders decided to go on with the planned five-story commercial development, but built it a bit awkwardly around the 108-year-old house where she remained till her death in 2008. Mary Cook purchased her home on West Avenue in Manhattan when the area's housing was still affordable, when an influx of wealthy people caused modern apartment buildings to sprout up on both sides of her house, she simply refused to relocate. So, sandwiched between two massive apartment buildings, is a small old New York townhouse of Mary Cook. A little background. First thing you should know is Chinese property laws prohibit private firms from evicting homeowners from their homes until the land's 70-year lease expires. Second, this house has become a symbol of resistance against developers in China because the government had to pave a highway around the house when the owners refused to give up on their property. Looks like a good U-turn point. This heritage building owner refused to sell his house in Melbourne, Australia, so this huge complex was built around it. The point to ponder is how on earth did this house manage to survive all of the chaos and dirt of constructing such a huge building around it? Such an ambitious project of building three magnificent highways. And then there was this family who refused to accept the government price. Hundreds of households were relocated but this family and its livestock now live in between three highways. How does it feel to be living under a bridge with the constant horns and noise of traffic? I don't know, but the owners of this house might know that. In 2011, Portland State University wanted to construct a residence hall for the university. They persuaded everyone to vacate their homes until they met Randall Acker. He had recently purchased and renovated his home and had no plans to leave. He was a lawyer by profession, and now, you guessed it, he fought the university in the court of law. And now, here stands the cute little 1800s house in the middle of this student housing area. Vera Koking and her husband purchased this New Jersey property in 1961 as a summer retreat, and over the next three decades, they refused many offers to buy the house. She first refused Bob Guccione, who wanted to build a casino around it, and then turned down Donald Trump, who wanted to expand his nearby casino and hotel. The city attempted to condemn the house through eminent domain under the influence of Trump's legal teams, but Koking fought the government and won, remaining in the country until 2010. This is exactly what happens when you don't reach a consensus for compensation for the demolition and this man literally is living on the road despite being in his home. This nail house sits in the middle of a road construction in Nanning, China when he couldn't reach an agreement in April of 2015. The residents of these homes in Zhejiang, China clearly don't mind the sound of traffic because they refuse to move to make way for the bulldozers. Their homes are now completely surrounded by a four-lane highway. Windless Holdings began purchasing all of the property on St. Patrick Street in Toronto in 1957. Their takeover strategy was going smoothly until they came across a crazy house owner of house number 54 and a half. Surprisingly, it was already known as 54 and a half before it became half a house. Yep, you guys heard it right. Half of the duplex was sold and the developers therefore had to carefully demolish only half of the building while leaving the load-bearing divider wall intact. Imagine how much pressure this homeowner would have had to endure before refusing to sell his half part of a home. Anyhow, the house has been in this state ever since and is currently occupied. This cute and happy man is Salah Ojani. The reason he looks so satisfied is right behind him. The only standing building in what used to be good old neighborhood of Salah. In northern France, when everyone vacated their houses, Salah refused to sell his coffee house where he has worked for the last 46 years of his life. No family can meet the stubbornness of the Wu family. They did not care for the money and they did not give a damn about the six-story shopping mall that the developers wanted to build there. 
They resisted for years until the developers dug a 30-foot deep pit around their entire house while the family was away. Despite this, the family broke into the construction site and returned to their home of three generations, with a Chinese flag flying up top, of course. As I said, stubborn homeowners in their solitary homes, known as nail houses, have become something of a phenomenon in China. They are called so because their occupants are stuck in place like hammered-in nails. In some cases, after the surrounding architecture has been demolished, the structures resemble nails. The Chinese government is having a difficult time getting rid of these people who refuse to move no matter how much money is offered. In retaliation, the government has cut power lines and even dug moats around some houses, which is quite a medieval method to solve disputes. Now, these are the kind of disputes I love talking about. See, Tokyo's main international port, Narita, has a contentious opening in 1978 despite protests from nearby farmers. Since the court prevented them from building more runways, it had to operate with only one runway until 2002 when the authorities managed to buy the majority of the surrounding farms and expand. But one farmer, Takao Shito, was not interested in moving and there came an odd compromise. The road leading to the runway was designed to curve around Shito's farm, which is located directly in the middle of the airport. The 68-year-old enters the farm through underground tunnels. However, I don't know how he manages to sleep with the constant sound of planes. The plans to build a road were daunted by this house in Shanghai that stands there proud for over 10 years after plans to build a road were announced. The family of seven living there didn't think that the government was offering them enough money to move, so they stayed put. Naturally, the road was built around them. Home is where the mom is. No matter if there is constant traffic that is incredibly noisy, it can be endured. The only reason this classic house in Washington Heights, Manhattan has survived is its current use as a church. It is a relic from a time when Manhattan streets were lined with detached and semi-detached houses rather than endless apartment buildings. By the way, is it just me or does this building look a little bit creepy? Another one from China, this time a lady named Jing Mihu from Ruyan exemplifies the definition of a nail house. Only her pointy house was left after space was cleared for a business plaza in 2013. She refused to locate because she believed the government was undervaluing her, despite the fact that she had only lived in the house for a year. She stayed in the house even after her water and electricity were turned off. Because, you know, who cares for electricity when you don't even know when your house will collapse? In July 2013, one lone homeowner in Suzhou, China, refused to sell to people hoping to revitalize their neighborhood with luxury apartments. This odd little house, which once blended in so well with its surroundings, now stands out like a piece of history. Two houses posed a significant challenge to the construction plans for 30 Rockefeller Plaza in the 1930s. 1246th Avenue, now a bakery, was a pub owned by three Irishmen at the time. They refused to sell to Rockefeller for less than $250 million, which was the estimated construction cost of the entire project. Similarly, the owner of 1258 6th Avenue, which is now a shoe store, refused to sell. As a result, 30 Rockefeller Plaza had to be built around them. They're still there, two little low hangers with a big feller in the middle. Here are some developers that are a stain to humanity. When some householders refused to relocate themselves from their 900-year-old village in China, they diverted a river to encircle the houses to force them to abandon their homes. And now, let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by a subscriber. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, just send it to us. Who knows, we might even feature it in one of our videos. Today's subscriber pick is a nail house from China that was demolished after an owner refused to move from under a bridge and highway. Do you think that was cool? I don't think so. Would you hold out like these stubborn home owners did for their homes? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Do like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to not miss any of the upcoming amazing videos. Thank you once again.